Good morning and welcome to worship here at St. John's United Methodist Church in Seaford, Delaware. I want to especially welcome our congregation and all of our Facebook friends. I wish I could sit down with all of you this morning and we could just talk together. That's not possible today, so we're going to talk at a distance. Today's lesson is from the Gospel of John, and it's the 14th chapter. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 7, so get your Bible, open it up to John 14, and you can be reading with me. While you're opening, let me tell you that uh, in this particular scripture, uh, Jesus is so beautiful. He's comforting his disciples. Uh, he knew very soon he would be crucified. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and he's trying to comfort them. And in the next part of it, he's telling Thomas and the rest that he is the way. And that's the title of this sermon, The Way. Let's begin. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And then I suppose Thomas had, was just getting more and more confused. And he, he, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And brothers and sisters, that is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me also. That's what he said. I cannot tell you how many times I have, I have read that scripture in the last 20 years of my ministry. How many times I have read it to people who are so sad. People at funerals, you know. People at memorials. And I have watched as I've read it. And I look in front of me and I see people who are broken, people who have tears in their eyes and hugging each other, people who feel lost and afraid and they need to be comforted. And I read this word, this beautiful word of God because it's sweet, it's calming, it brings assurance. God is saying, I will never forget you. I am with you. I've got your back. I love you. So here, here's what we're going to do today. We'll take a little journey together. And let's sit down beside our Lord. And allow him to share his word with us. Let us hear his particular message to each one of us because when the word goes out from the scripture, when it's proclaimed, we never know just how it's going to be touching a person and that's God's business. So may it touch your heart beautifully today. And let's listen as he brings comfort to his disciples. He's preparing them. Hear these words. He's preparing them. And what he's talking about here is standing firm. Um, 
He's standing firm when it looks like that death and evil are going to take over. Again, he knew he would soon be arrested. And he knew they were going to be scattered and they were, they were not going to understand, just like Thomas. They weren't going to understand, even though he had talked and talked to them. And he's saying to them, don't let your present troubles, and you will have those troubles when, when he was arrested. It was horrible. Don't let your present troubles overcome the strength that you have in here. Don't do that. Hold fast to the promises. Hold fast to the things you've seen, to the things you've heard. Believe in God, he said. Believe also in me. He knew he was going to be crucified, right? But here's the thing. That would be horrible enough. But what they had to do, what we have to do, I believe, is to get beyond the death. Get beyond it, as horrible as it was. And to see God's work finished in that cross. To see that death has finally been defeated by that cross. He spoke about his father's house. And he said, I'm going to return to the father. I'm going to prepare a place for you. What he's saying is, I'm going to make it possible for you to have a relationship with God in heaven. Ah, but... When does that relationship start? Right here on earth. So Jesus was going to make it possible for us to begin a relationship with his Father on earth and carry it through eternally. And that's his promise to you too. He told Thomas when Thomas said, uh, don't, I don't know where you're going. Sounded like a little boy. I don't know where you're going, and I don't know the way. And right then, Jesus gave him that beautiful bit of scripture, I am the way. Thomas, I am the way. I'm the path. My work is the work of the Father. I want you to join me, Thomas, and let me take you to the Father, not just then, but now. I'm the truth. I'm the way and I'm the truth. And I am standing here, Thomas, culmination of every prophecy on every promise. And Thomas, to know me is to know God. I'm the way, I'm the truth. I am life. And that life, Thomas, for you and for all people, if they so choose, begins right now. You can work with God right now, Thomas. You can go beyond the now and into the forever with God. That's what I'm making possible for you. Amazing. He assured them that he and the Father were one. He assured them that he was there to reveal God and that as he revealed God, that meant their search, the anxiousness, the emptiness that they felt had just ended. And then he said to them, those who have faith in me do what I'm doing. But you know what? They're going to go on and do greater things. I can't imagine knowing that I was going to be crucified very soon and saying things to, re to reassure people. That is, that is so beautiful. This so reminded me, when I was writing this sermon, it so reminded me of John the Baptist. You remember John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. And he said that he was the one who prepared the way for Jesus. And uh, God uh, had promised him that when he baptized someone, someday he would see the Holy Spirit descend upon that person. And with Jesus, he saw the Holy Spirit, as the scripture says, descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And he knew. 
He knew that his cousin, Jesus, was the Messiah. He knew it. And then a little later, he, John was standing with some of his disciples, and, and he looked down the road, and there came Jesus. And he said to them, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, he believed. And then Herod put John into prison. And John, the longer he stayed there, the more he began to question. And he called his disciples and to him, and he said, I want you to go to Jesus, and I want you to ask him one question. I want you to ask him, are you the one who was to come? Or should, or should we expect another? And Jesus got the question, and here's, here's the kind of thing he said to the disciples to take home to, to John. Go back and report to John what you've seen and what you hear. The blind see, the lame walk, the leper is cleansed, the dead are raised, the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away because of me. What he's doing is saying, look and hear, see and hear God's love in action. Take it back to John. Reassure him. And they did. And when I got to this point in writing the sermon, I thought, okay, so how is this applied to me? How does it apply to these dear people to whom I'm going to be preaching? And I ask myself, do we really see and do we really hear the love of God? Do we? And we say, of course I do. I, I love God. I, I, of course I see God's love. It's, it's all around me. Okay. How about when you can't pay your bills? How apt are you to see God's love? How about if you and your family are in the middle of an emotional crisis of great proportion? How easy is it to see and to hear God's love in action? And how about if you, like myself, and are in the midst of something called COVID-19? How easy is it? At these times, do you ever, do you ever ask yourself, do you ever ask yourself, at these times or at other times, is God still at work? Where is he? What, am I supposed to still be in a relationship with God? Is he mad with me? Is he mad with us? Is God still the way, like he said he was, and the truth and the life? And it's to people like that. It's to people like myself. It's to people like you. At these times in our lives, that God comes near to you and he says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And I, I began to think, okay, where, where, where do you see him? Where do you hear him? I I can tell you some places, and I guarantee you, see, if we were sitting here talking together, you would tell me some, too. We had, I live at Manor House in Seaford, and we have uh, some women here, about nine or ten of them, I, they tell me, who uh, decided they wanted to make masks so that we could wear them. And do you know what they have done? This is a rather large place. They have made masks for every staff member on the first and second floor. They have 
made masks for every resident on the first and second floor. They have made masks for the staff and the residents in the healthcare neighborhood. And they don't stop. I was talking to one of them yesterday and she said, well, I said, how many masks have you made so far? Well, I've made 60. And I said, well, what did you do with them? Well, I gave them to the appropriate person and they're going to be, you know, given to people. But, I, you know, she wasn't finished. And I thought, I see God in that. I see caring in that. I see concern in that. And God is the author of caring and concern. I see love in that. And God is love. Let me tell you another one. I love this. I saw this on TV, and I hope you did. I love watching little children, especially when they're about five, six, seven in that neighborhood, because they're thinking and they're growing, and some of them uh, early on are just beginning to learn to read. And as a former teacher, you know, I just love it. And so this dear little boy, seven years old, and I believe that's about second grade, heard that doctors and nurses, I assume in a local hospital, needed gloves. They were running out of those gloves that they put on. And here, the, or here are his words. He said, I got concerned about that. And you know what he did? And I'm sure his daddy and mommy went with him, but he collected, it is my understanding, thousands of those gloves and gave them to the hospital. I see God at work in this little child who shall lead us. It was beautiful. And in the, so in the midst of the disaster, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of, of the nasty, God says, I'm right in the middle of this mess with you. Do you understand that? In my town in Seaford, um, oh, this was like, some days ago now, I, I can look out my living room window and see the, the front gate. Well, I just, it's pretty at there. The, the grounds are really beautiful. And I, I looked out and I saw a fire truck parked on the road, on Middle Ford Road that runs right in front of the manor house. And I thought, what in the world? And then I thought, oh no. I kept looking down there, there are shrubs and trees. It was difficult to see. But I thought, oh my goodness, don't tell me. There's something, a fire at the hospital, and they're just waiting their turn to get in. I called down at the gate, and they did not seem to know either. Well, long story short, I found out that not only fire trucks, but EMTs and probably others apparently were making a line from Manor House to the hospital. Do you know why? They were waiting for the shift to change. When those tired and overworked and dedicated and risky healthcare people came out of the hospital and the new crew came in and they wanted to applaud them and salute them. I think that is love. I think that is the love of God in action. Are you the one, Jesus? Or should we wait for another? Is that you, Jesus? I believe it is. But you see, this love in action of God is, is a different kind of love. It's radical. It's a love that has no thought of any kind of reward. It's a love that is sacrificial. It's a love that places the welfare of other people above its own. This is the kind of love that says, I am making a choice. I choose to believe in God. I choose to believe in Jesus. And if I choose to believe, that means I choose to commit. So I choose to commit when I see that someone's hungry if I can, 
I'm going to feed that person one way or the other. I want to show God's love in action. When someone's thirsty, I'm going to provide water for them. I connect with a stranger. Invite them into my church. Don't let them sit there but go and shake their hand. I'm going to clothe the needy. I'm going to help the sick. I'm going to visit the prisoner. I'm going to do for God what God leads me to do for him. I'm going to put his love in action. And I, in that way, people can see God. I choose to see. I choose to hear God at work. Barbara Brown Taylor uh, has uh, written many, many books. And I, uh, she's an Episcopalian priest. And uh, she wrote one called Gospel Medicine. And I want to tell you what she has to say about all this. She said, God came all this way where we are through Jesus. He became flesh and blood to bring divine love to life. No more waiting for us to be obedient. And then I love this line. All God ever wanted to do was save our stubborn hides so God could love us and live in us and we in him. One time our Lord said, my sheep hear my voice. So perhaps I ask myself and I'll share this with you and then we'll, we'll end. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves today, do I really see the Messiah in Jesus? If so, I better do something about that. Do I hear God in the speech of Jesus? How about the works of Jesus? Is there any God in there? Is there any Messiah in there? Is there any fulfillment of prophecy in there? And do I really believe him when he says, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these? Do we dare to trust him when he says, do not let your hearts be troubled? Do we believe that our God and he alone is the way and the truth, and the life. Amen. Would you receive the benediction? I want you to go now and live your life and see Christ. Look for him this week. You'll find him. Hear Christ. Keep listening this week. You'll hear Christ. You'll see and you'll hear Christ in the pain and the hurt and the laughter and the joy of other people. Do the works of God this week. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all of God's people together say, Amen. God bless you and keep you.